Assalamualaikum everyone. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ini partisipannya masih ya on the seven participant. Macam mana ya? Kita tunggu sekejap atau uh, kita go on? Kita tunggu dalam dua minit ya. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Mungkin kita start aja ya. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. Wassalatu wassalamu ala asyrafil anbiya wal mursalin wa ala alihi washabbihi ajma'in. Amma ba'du. Uh, let's we start our uh, session uh, this morning by session of Al-Qur'an Al-Fatihah. Okay, uh, I would like to thank to everyone uh, who attending this uh, KOP Teh Tarik uh, talk series number four. So this is our um, our routine uh, uh, session in order for us to communicate our uh, research among the uh, lecturer in FOP. And I would like to also say the Ramadan Mubarak. Hopefully, you will get the blessing from Allah Taala. And then also, um, I would like to request the participant to uh, click the item link already share uh, through the chat so because uh, then we can record and also we will get the ctd point for this okay for today we have uh, two um uh, yeah from a uh, lecturer from our uh kulia first is the associate professor dr Hamid fauzi from the department of basic medical science uh, basic medical science AKOP, yeah. and secondly, and as uh, assistant professor Dr. Muhammad Hassan Abdul Aziz Al Naim from the Department of Pharmaceutical Practice, also from uh, KOP. So, uh, Dr. Hamid will present for uh, one hour until 11 o'clock yeah, this morning, and, uh, and then we continue with uh, Dr. Hassan and Dr. Naim yeah, uh, until uh, 12 o'clock. Okay. So, Dr. Associate Professor Dr. Hamid Fauzi uh, will present uh, will share uh, his research entitled "The Potential of uh, Versatility of RNA Catalysis." Yeah. And then, while the Dr. Uh, uh, Hassan Al Naim will also talk with uh, regarding the qualities of uh, medicine. Yeah. So, uh, I think uh, without further ado, I would like to uh, start yeah, from the uh, Dr. Hamid Fauzi. So, Dr. Hamid Fauzi. Now the floor is yours. Terima kasih. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. 
Oke, uh, okay, I will save ini. Yes, sir. Oke, okay, ya. Mana, mana, mana. Eh, tak boleh lagi? Boleh, sudah sudah saya itu kan. Um, sudah saya... Boleh? Boleh. Sudah. Sepertinya boleh. Sepertinya boleh. Kejap, kejap. Yes, stop. Can you see the screen? Yes, I, I can see your screen. Okay. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, thank you, uh, Pak Alfi. Uh, for the introduction. Okay, uh, alhamdulillah. <coughs> alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin. Nahmadu wa nasta'inu wa nasta'gfiru wa na'udhu billahi min sururi anfusina wa min syai'ati amalina may yahdillahu fala mudillalah wa may yudlilhu fala hadiyalah uh, Alhamdulillah uh, with uh, his favor or nikmat and then we can uh, sit together even is still in online ya yeah? uh, to share a knowledge ya yeah? is in the The meeting, uh, I mean the knowledge meeting. So this is actually uh, I miss this uh, kind of the meeting uh, for long time huh? because uh, when I was in the previous uh, institution, uh, we never have some uh, meeting like this. Huh? Uh, the, the last meeting, of course, uh, when I was in the offices, huh? I mean in the uh, United States. Huh? This is, uh, I think, this is the good uh, meeting. Huh? Uh, to share our knowledge to our colleagues, especially in the kuliah of pharmacy, huh? because this is uh, one uh, of the challenge for us to add fun. I mean, to explore our uh, knowledge and then to share to the everybody, and then so a knowledge will become the uh, I mean the very uh, have some value. You know, uh, uh, this is. Uh, Of course, uh, selalunya the, the meeting of this line, uh, selalunya like in, in the United States and in Japan, they really just like the weekly uh, meeting. The one, I mean, this is this is uh, quite as well when I see the tetarik. It means selalunya mesti ada tetarik nih, ya, Afi. Huh? Because uh, because this Ramadan, because no tetarik. Because sambil minum, when we drink the tetarik, and then we discuss with other people, and then uh, what kind of topic, what kind of the the research that had been going. Yeah, because this is important. This is. Also, like I mean, the the condition like this is like common in the uh, in Japan in the, most in the opposite uh, country, yeah. Because uh, selalunya uh, most of the scientists, most of the researcher, they uh, share the knowledge during the uh, coffee hour. Huh? When we uh, try apa uh, the coffee, and then that time we have some good idea to do the next research. series. Uh, next series, uh, Dr. Amit, series number uh, five, we will have this tetari, real tetari. Oh, okay, insyaallah, insyaallah. Tetari uh -huh. open. Okay, so, <clears throat> so uh, okay, go to the, uh, I mean the, the topic because because you know uh, this is uh, I want to go to to share my knowledge, my experience, research on RNA yeah? because you know the knowledge is actually just a knowledge without sharing yeah? because we have to share our knowledge uh, to uh, everybody uh, because the so knowledge become the uh, the value for us. Uh, uh, I mean this is like a money. Huh? Uh, because the money is to be a value, uh, it, it must be circulate. Yeah? So in circulating, and then we can in, the increase the, of course, the uh, quantity, the value, and then the, uh, I mean, the, the, I mean, anything that can be explored. So uh, today, uh, I try to explain, to share our uh, my knowledge on, uh, especially on the uh, nucleate age research that I've been working for long term i mean uh, since uh, when i the first time come to japan eh? this is uh, because uh, i just focus on the rna or nucleic acid especially rna uh, the first one is actually uh, regarding the rna eh? this is the, the one of the enzyme that uh, catalyze the rna and then after that we i explore to the uh, rna catalysis <clears throat> so this is the uh, as, uh, i mean the 
how uh, uh, since uh, I know this is uh, this is not like the the small meeting because this is the meeting is come from the what we call the various uh, of discipline uh, people with the various of discipline the background so I'll try just to ex uh, explain the, the in general not in detail so what actually the RNA catalyzes huh? what gets the important thing in terms of the uh, development a drug discovery uh, drug discovery uh, so also this also can be because the RNA catalyst actually they can be used as a therapeutic or uh, or even dynastic this is what what i have been work uh, on on this okay we start <laughs> this is the just back to the uh, what we call the uh, i think this is uh, 20 years ago uh, when i just uh, uh, Finish my uh, PhD. Uh, this is, uh, I think, all of you know uh, regarding the this project, because this project is actually the big project uh, from the scientists around the world. How this project uh, is very important. This is what we call the human genome project. Uh, the human gen genome project actually starting. This is, uh, I mean, uh, the the what the idea come from the the, the scientist is uh, around 1998. Uh, 89 at the time, yeah. Uh, I mean, the uh, 89 and then start and then but start in the 1995. Uh, this is the when I was just uh, graduate from my master to the day and then the time. And then the predicted of the this project is will be finished on the 2005. But luckily, because the work, uh, I mean, around the world scientists, the the project uh, almost done in I mean two years uh, early. This is around 2003. This already done. This is even this not 100, but always uh, almost. Uh, this is 98. Uh, the genome, uh, the human genome, is uh, have been uh, sequenced huh? because this is. And then what related with our uh, my talk today? This is because uh, you know. So you have to see the what kind of information for the human genome project because this is the starting point to, I mean, go to the modern of the uh, therapeutic, the modern of the thinking uh, regarding uh, in terms of the medication. Uh, because from this part, actually, many things that we can uh, get information, especially related to the genomic, to uh, the genetic of the human. Because, uh, you know, from this, actually, uh, there is uh, one of the information, actually, in our body. Actually, there is uh, that we call the uh, especially for the people who work on the molecular biology. We know about the, uh, the base pair, the nucleotide. So from this, actually, we, we seek uh, the, all the scientists sequences around 3 billion of the base pair, the nucleotide. Uh, nucleotide. Because the molecular is actually the important thing in terms of for the DNA, because there is, a, you know, uh, there is a ACGA, uh, I mean ACGT, this is the one of the base pair and in the form nucleotide. It's, this is the important one. So, and then uh, the important, of course, uh, because uh, this is how our body has been expressed from the uh, this genetic. So, from this one, also there is uh, information that uh, very important thing regarding the, the gene, the gene who express in our, uh, our body. This is around twenty until twenty five k uh, thousand of the gene had been uh, discovered had been identified uh, from this genome project. So it means uh, the so when we see, because the gene actually is, uh, I mean, uh, not, not all the, from the 30, I mean, from the 3 billion of the base pair is, uh, I mean, the, is translated to the, I mean, to the, the gene and, and expressed to the protein. So one thing from this actually, uh, after the at the end actually uh, what kind of the information yang very very important thing actually this is just uh, how this is from the three billion only one until one on five percent of the DNA code to the protein I mean to go to the that's why we call this is coding RNA huh? the coding RNA this is only code this is only one percent how about the rest the rest actually ninety nine percent is nothing. At the beginning, the, the, the researcher just thinking about this 99% is like junk, junk RNA or DNA. The junk is nothing for a function in the, our body. But that's why uh, for this, and then scientists focus the research of, uh, for this uh, junk. Huh? No, going after this, of course, actually many uh, things that, uh, I mean, the, even this, also this is uh, back to the 
our creator Allah Subhanahu wa taala is nothing sia sia there is tak ada yang tak berguna ada Allah create eh, to us and then actually there is a, a very useful i mean uh, in our body in top of the the function uh, so this is uh, so maknanya that's why why actually our body from one person to other person there is actually 99% is actually the same genetic eh? uh, but only 1% That's why this is the, we focus the only one person who translate to the protein, who translate to our body, express in our body. Okay, this is the human genome project. So this is just uh, to back. I mean, the, how to understanding regarding how you understanding. Uh, I mean, in work on the molecular biology. So uh, this is the basic, the fundamental of the molecular biology. Uh, Sorry, uh, even I am pharmacist. Actually, I, I, I mean, uh, I focus on the microbiology because it's very interest, uh, interesting regarding the how to make. I mean, the drug discovery. Yeah, uh, this is back to the the basic, uh, the fundamental of molecular biology. I think all uh, all we know. I mean, the the basic, especially for the people. I mean, for the person who come from the I mean, the degree in the uh, science. Yeah, uh, and not even in the sekolah menengah pun, I think the ada sedikit that we call the we call the the central dogma. Huh? Central dogma and how from the DNA go to the protein, uh, protein in our body. Uh, not only this and some other eukaryote ke, prokaryote. Eh? This is uh, the same. This uh, DNA, DNA RNA itu. This is the all the central dogma. So from this actually the you know the DNA is actually the name is a genome, huh? a genome itself and then how the Uh, but for the modern uh, central uh, dogma, actually this is uh, this, uh, this not simple like this, because the even like this, like the the RNA also can be back to become the DNA of course, but reverse uh, transcription and we call this one. So this is actually the circulation. That's why why when we study of the virus RNA virus, huh, something like the COVID, also uh, the possible why the 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 RNA virus uh, become the DNA back and then again to uh, infect to the person in the cell huh? this is the so there is many process uh, in the uh, between uh, <coughs> dna rna to the protein in central dogma that's why this is the uh, one of of course there is and we call the from dna rna this become the uh, we call this the transcription uh, that's why there is other uh, one of the, the the i mean the the field that we call the uh, transcriptomic huh? and then uh, the other one also there is some um, Uh, we call the uh, ribo uh, nucleocom. This is the uh, in terms of the uh, non coding RNA. This is around yang 98% eh, of the nucleic acid. And then until go to the the protein. And then from the RNA, especially is we call the messenger RNA to be translated to the protein to become protein according to the certain protein. Of course, for each uh, genome, they have some uh, certain. Uh, this is just the basic of the molecular biology. So. Uh, What actually non-coding RNA? This is non-coding RNA. You know, tadi ya uh, 95 percent because this is this is uh, uh, non-coding RNA. Actually, the we call this is the because of the uh, the last segment in the in the genome is not translate to the protein. As I said uh, before, this is not transmit. Actually, not become to protein, but uh, they have some function actually in in the cell. Some other you uh, correct ke for create eh? this is the uh, this is the uh, so and then they have some major role to the process even they uh, I mean uh, in terms of the especially in terms of the regulation gene regulation uh, and then gene expression this is the important thing what they in encoding RNA yeah? so and then uh, how uh, this uh, you know uh, Because this is uh, the important thing of in the I mean the even uh, in the beginning of I mean in 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 this uh, beginning is actually the all the scientists this is that's jam yeah just macam sampah je and then uh, they just uh, but try find uh, one by one they find actually they have some I mean important in the biological process huh? uh, that's why most of the that's why this is very important thing especially for the who who interest in the of the, the 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 disease the i mean so this is especially this related to the the cancer hmm? uh, because the, the cancer uh, always uh, related to the uh, what we call the dna huh? because this is uh, you know how the dna replication and the, especially for the uh, cancer cell huh? this is the why this i mean the, to the disease uh, karena itu that's why when we see that the medication 
or for the cancer, especially like chemotherapy, is actually this just analog, analog to the uh, structure of the DNA. Some other, the, this is some purine uh, analog or uh, pyrimidine analog. Uh, this is one of the how to the strategy to uh, make uh, I mean uh, manipulate the the process of the uh, gene regulation. Okay, this is not going to end So this is uh, what we call what kind of non-coding. Actually, from the ninety eight percent of the non-coding RNA. There's many things, I mean, the, the classification. Huh? There is many things that uh, we have uh, can study. This is the, all the scientists try to find the classify uh, because the classification uh, classification is very necessary uh, underlying the, the mechanism of disease. Huh? And then also to design the, the, the target huh? because the, the process, because we thought this and then it's difficult to, uh, I mean, to design what kind of the uh, the drug? What kind of the I mean uh, that can treat for some disease actually with related with the uh, molecular back? Because most of this is actually related to the uh, uh, molecular biology part, uh, especially in the cell. Uh, 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 most of the like this. Uh. So there is a few things uh, because your alunya classification. This is uh, based on uh, most of the scientists just based on the. Uh, uh, because this is, uh, you know, it's very long, long, long. I mean, uh, DNA sequence. This is can be short and then the long one. The, the short one actually. This is uh, 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 there is a few things that maybe you can see here and in the, in the uh, there is some uh, uh, yang the common one is like tRNA uh, and then also maybe have you uh, Another uh, with you have learned, I mean, you have uh, heard about the microRNA, mRNA, and then ribosome, ribosome. Uh, ribosome maybe uh, not so many people about the, uh, I mean, uh, know about the ribosome, and then the, there is also uh, ribosome. This is all the thing that uh, that I have been work uh, on it. Yeah, uh, I have been working in the ribosome, and then I have been work in the tRNA, uh, microRNA, ribosome, also even in the group one intron, and then the. Uh, for the, the long uh, non-coding, actually, this is just a few one. Eh? I mean, the but this is a very, very long, uh, especially the RNA, because you know RNA is actually unstable. So this is uh, one is actually a common one, is actually yang ramai the other scientists focus in the antisense. Eh? This is uh, in term, I mean, treatment, especially for the cancer. Eh? Also for the, uh, what we call the virus infection. Eh? So now recently that I, Try to find it in the some literature, most uh, common research and focus on the uh, circular RNA. Eh? This is also the kind of this is uh, just uh, find in the few. Uh, I mean, the, in years uh, ago, eh? uh, regarding the uh, another of the non-coding RNA, because one by one every year after the, the I mean the gen uh, genome project, uh, many uh, scientists find the the function of the this RNA. Uh, this is where they get the catalysis. This is the uh, this why this is the one of the actually cycles very I mean the challenging for us uh, especially for the uh, lecture for who I mean uh, work on uh, multiple budgets in part of the to find uh, this is uh, now uh, many information regarding the circular RNA this is related to the like the CKD uh, with the upper uh, with the liver. Uh, the kidney, eh? kidney problem, uh, so the CKD, and then how to treat the CKD with uh, the uh, with the uh, this uh, circular RNA. Uh, that's many things, and then so that's why why we need the discussion actually to make see the, the mechanism uh, to see what how they, they can work, how they can be. So from this and then the the researcher uh, or the scientist can be designed, uh, can design the, uh, the, the 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 RNA, the, uh, the artificial RNA that can be used as a uh, therapeutic agent. Okay, uh, now go to the uh, yes, uh, uh, go to the, the first, uh, of course, the first uh, related RNAs is the RNAs, eh? uh, because this I, I mean, I work. So now this is the ribozyme. What is actually a ribozyme? This is a ribozyme. The first uh, catalytic, the, I mean, the RNA is defined by, uh, by of two big uh, researchers. Uh, I mean, this is the Thomas K and then the uh, Sydney Elman. Huh? This is uh, around uh, 19. 80, uh, 89, uh, 1989, uh, they got the Nobel Prize. A actually, even the, they start work on the, this RNA is uh, 1982. But in 1989, the, they uh, got a uh, gold prize for the discovery of the RNA. So they said the RNA is not like molecule. 
the something molecule but RNA also can be used as a uh, they have some function actually as a biological catalytic huh? this is the as I said biological catalytic it's mine it means like uh, that's why the name is uh, because lalunya we always thinking the catalytic is only I mean catalyzed by the enzyme uh, in the beginning all the I mean the all the uh, uh, thinking about the the catalytic is also related to the enzyme. I think all of them, you know the enzyme. How the enzyme work? Huh? Because this is uh, the slalunya because the enzyme itself actually the protein. Huh? Enzyme protein because this is the amino amino acid, right? So from this catalytic, this is very important thing. Huh? Uh, ribosome. So from this and then the ribosome. How the ribosome? How the RNA is molecule? Huh? How the, the RNA molecule is working uh, as a ribo uh, as enzyme? They have some catalytic. They have some uh, action. How to clip it? Uh, how to clip the RNA itself? Huh? Uh, some other. Uh, this is the the important thing of the ribosome. So this is the the ribosome. So one or uh, why this is uh, as I said mentioned before. This is the when uh, selalunya enzyme pun is very uh, important thing in the uh, enzyme in the beginning i mean a very important thing in the biological process especially in our body with the, with the some uh, problem in the enzyme that of course uh, our body is become a problem and then uh, and then why why uh, all the i mean the, the this is also this is because of the some the enzyme so this is the i mean the, the thing of the site is so that, that's why the uh, this is the, the ribosome because uh, also this is related to the uh, I mean the uh, apa, uh, to the disease how to because the name actually sometimes the from the name is also we can try this I mean the the some other this can be actually from the ribo enzyme I mean the the ribo is come uh, from the RNA itself the the ribo nucleic acid huh? and then the enzyme so mananya the RNA that can act as enzyme exactly same but of course the mechanism little bit different uh, because how they work huh? how they work and then how to uh, because and then one thing the important thing when, when we compare to the the enzyme of course the enzyme is big molecule because this is a uh, composition from the amino acid uh, so you know but the the ribosome is very small i mean smaller than the uh, because this is quite challenge how to develop the ribosome as a therapeutic agent as a uh, i mean the, the the potential the agent the potential can be used for the treat of uh, some disease huh? this is the ribosome itself so maknanya this is uh, <clears throat> and then how so how they work actually very simple huh? how the uh, this is uh, like uh, because in the beginning when uh, last time when i try to find uh, this is 1992 when I uh, come uh, the first time uh, come to Japan. Eh? This, uh, this is actually the simple one. When we see this is the, the ribosome, because of course, uh, tadi, uh, when we see the, the, the from the whole the genome project and only one uh, one percent, eh? this is actually coding. So mananya, this is <clears throat> this is uh, how the, the code comes actually from the messenger RNA. So how to uh, disrupt, how to interrupt the uh, the process of translation actually uh, of course most of the disease actually especially who, who related to the genetic they how to interrupt the process of the translation uh, sama the sama in, in virus also uh, through the different virus we have to interrupt the process of from the, the end the replication so and then from this actually how they work how they work uh, how to treat this from ribozyme how to bind with the the uh, with the specific messenger RNA who translate to who as a code sequence for the the protein this is very important thing so uh how they, they can just find as a complementary this is same like uh, because you know maybe the complementary is actually as you know uh, selalunya kita uh, complementary just uh thinking in in the uh, what we call in the dna there is some uh, watson trick uh, especially for the uh for the person for the lecture who come from the uh medicine uh, medicine chemistry this is uh, uh, I mean the and then the ribozyme of course one the binding of course with the specific sequence I mean with the specific uh, so let's just three base specific base that's why this is very important thing so uh, and then they will be clip it will be cut will be uh, uh, with like a sizer uh, uh, scissor, uh, just 
potong dia and then so of course the, the process the transaction become uh, terminate eh? so this is the process of the uh, how to uh, I mean uh, so mananya ada clip ada arena eh? this is how they work very simple this is like same like when uh, when we compare with the arenas eh? this is the uh, how arenas work to of course the RNA is the, the, the enzyme uh, because also this is the RNA so mananya RNA and then how uh, this come this is the, the the mechanism of the uh, the ribozyme <clears throat> so this is as a comparison uh, the challenging i mean the, the i mean the the advantage of the ribozyme can use for the uh, because the characteristic of the ribozyme like like enzyme so when we compare with the, the the first before I mean the the first finding this is the antisen also can use as a therapeutic, but the problem is the antisen is actually this also long, huh? very uh, long, and then they just went to the but there is no cut. They just how to disturb of the transition. So mananya once they bind the stop this uh, but different with the ribozyme. Ribozyme when the cut and then the skin still work. I uh, mean uh, just like enzyme they go go and then uh, can be reusable i mean can be reusable and then try to make some reaction you know the reaction of the the chemical reaction as it depend on the especially enzymatic they wrong on the, of course the ph will be increased the apa, the the rate of reaction and then also uh, some another cofactor so this is the enzyme and then so that's why with the small uh, amount of the ribozyme that can be uh, used for the big i mean the the the, the higher of the reaction they can be served as a substrate what can the substrate so they follow this is uh, like the enzyme they follow the what we call the maybe uh, you still remember regarding the michaelis maintain michaelis maintain this is the uh, once of the they reach the, the stagnant and it will be uh, like this huh? but the, the follow of the uh, post order reaction this is the all the reaction that i i mean the the research that i have been done in when i was in japan uh, how to see uh, the activity of this uh, ribozyme. Huh? This is the, the, the difference between the antisen of anion. So, and then uh, how to relate, and then, uh, of course, this is very related to the pharmacy, especially to in terms of the drug discovery. So, this is just comparison uh, between the, uh, the enzyme and the uh, ribozyme uh, reaction, the mechanism reaction, especially for the, uh, the lecture who come from the medicinal chemistry. No, but how the RNA clipids by the enzyme uh, because most of it actually this is because of the nucleophilic attack. Uh, this is because of the one actually in terms of the phosphodiester. Uh, this is the uh, as you know in the, the in the A. Uh, this is just uh, nucleophilic attack. So, but different in the ribozyme. Uh, even it's a nucleophilic attack, but they need some uh, metal. Uh, some metal ions, selalunya magnesium uh, because this is also uh, I have been work to compare which actually the metal ion very I mean uh, very useful in the, I mean uh, young have uh, some uh, high reaction uh, with the uh, ribozyme this is I to compare with the some uh, metal ion like magnesium mangan saying uh, other but the magnesium is actually the uh, I mean the highest one how to make uh, and then how the reaction oh, okay this is uh, also this uh, for my uh, PhD dissertation uh, thesis yeah uh, this is also uh, this uh, can this uh, and then some other the word it is directly or indirectly this is just mechanism we don't need to uh, especially for the people uh, just uh, know about the, uh, the the reaction this is mananya of course the ribosome they need uh, metal ion that is especially for the uh, b uh, metal ion so mananya, but the concentration is very very low uh, this is the compared to the enzyme the enzyme is of course they need just uh, selalunya just the temperature so uh, what kind of ribosome that have been uh, discovered now from now? There is, uh, I think, uh, there is many things. There's actually even uh, apa, when we see uh, yang 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 is common one actually the tRNA itself. Uh, if you know the tRNA is actually kita selalunya kalau yang from the basic basic of the molecular biology uh, what the pass of tRNA we know. The TRN function how to make uh, I mean the as a, a mediator as a adapter for the translation uh, from the uh, from the RNA. Kita, we don't know uh, apa yang from the 
sebenarnya uh, from the orang awam ya, the public disease from the RNA itu di protein just uh, adapter tuh because the, the RNA is some specific that we call the anticodon and codon interaction ya, with the messenger RNA. Uh, this is uh, also this is a ribosome. Nanti kita na, this is uh, also uh, I do this uh, ribosome is uh, specially with the RNA. This uh, when I was in United States. And then the other one, there is another what we call the ribonuclease P. This is the first uh, ribosome. Eh? Next this is a button. And then uh, there is some, uh, apa, uh, of course, uh, splicing, uh, splicing and sub splicing. Because you know, uh, in the process of molecular biology, actually, uh, that's why, why uh, even from the 3 billion of the uh, nucleotide from uh, base pair, This is only 20 or 20k. So mananya there is a rest of the uh, DNA or RNA is not I mean uh, to to the gene. So this is the uh, we call the other uh, we call the process of the splicing. Yeah? So this is the one of the uh, the ribosome uh, can find is actually group one intron. Huh? This is uh, this is the first and then the largest of ribosome. This is group one intron and then group two intron. Uh, sorry, this I I'm not uh, just uh, Uh, in detail. So this is, uh, and then the other one actually the uh, hyphen uh, ribosome. This, uh, and then the last one is actually for amaryl and SDP. This is the uh, last time I focus in the amaryl and SDP. Amaryl now until now this is the ones of the ribosome uh, to treat the HIV uh, because this is uh, last time uh, try to treat the HIV because this is the challenge to I mean to treat for the uh, the AIDS. Uh, uh, this is the Uh, how the the mepasan because it's in term of the RNA replication. So this is uh, how uh, this is like enzyme. Uh, of course, uh, when we study of the RNA, also we have to understanding regarding the 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 structure because with the structure we can decide. With the structure we can uh, design what actually because uh, because of course as enzyme enzyme must be have some active site. Uh, they bind active site and bind with the the substrate with the specific active site. Uh, they can bind, but the, of course they need the folding. They need the conformation chain to make some binding with the active site with the specific active site. Same. This is similar with the the uh, the uh, the ribosome. So we need to study also the the what we call the uh, secondary structure. And then uh, this is a few of the. Secondary structure of the ribosome, and then of course uh, this is already uh, had been uh, crystallized uh, st uh, study structure. So mananya this is like say, and then actually what kind of how they they make uh, clip it to the RNA. So uh, there is some amaryl, the simple one because amaryl because uh, why they they call amaryl because they they, they uh, the the of the secondary structure is like hammer huh? the height of hammer huh? this is hammer and then the, the other one is the hyphen and then there is some the this is the simple one and the uh, i mean the the there is one the biggest uh, the lingos is actually group one intron and group two intron and then also there is some sdp this is the for my uh, the sdp actually this is my uh, dissertation yeah, for the sdp ribosome so Uh, this is uh, the other as I mean the the, the largest uh, the line uh, of the uh, group uh, of ribosome they call this uh, group one intron uh, splicing because they have some function as a uh, sub splicing uh. this is the the process you know you know uh, especially when we uh, actually from the uh, how the I mean the our uh, uh, genetic and in the this is a composition between the intron and the exon As you know, the uh, in the eukaryote, this is there is a okay, especially in the eukaryote. So, mananya there is some uh, apa, they must be before the translate to the protein. It must be uh, splice the intron. They buakan buang, they throw it the, the intron from the sequencing uh, before translate to the protein. So, this is uh, why this is uh, from the beginning. This is. Uh, Uh, they find from the tetrahemin, uh, tetrahemin uh, thermophilia. This is the I mean some protozoa. This is uh, they find the process of this uh, self splicing. So, macam mana how this uh, splicing can be done actually in the in the cell of the some uh, microorganism. Uh? So actually, this is a simple one. This is uh, there is some a function from the whole length of the uh, RNA 
uh, there is some process that we call the splicing. How? This is actually because of the sum that we call the, uh, at the time is we call the group one intron. Uh, how the process, the kind just actually the same like uh, with the specific uh, apa, uh, sequence, uh, the pines and then they just binding with the uh, G couple. Uh, G couple with the GG and then they try to splicing and then uh, nucleophile uh, filling and then so. So this is actually when you see in, in, in this figure, actually this is the, the cis, maknanya is the cis acting, this is uh, from the original one. And then how to interrupt, how to uh, from the outside, of course, we call the like the 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 C and the picture. This is from the outside. How to in uh, we try to make some artificial of uh, group one intron. This is similar to the originally the nature of the group one intron. So and then the treatment can be used to uh, disrupt of the uh, uh, the splicing. Uh, this is the, the splicing one. So maknanya, and then at the end, of course, this is the all the the mature of the mes, uh, messenger RNA that can uh, mean the ready for the uh, transition. Okay, I, I, this is the SDV ribosome that I have been studied. This is uh, also the, I mean the the short one and the, uh, this is the should do not. Uh, this is the SDP one of actually this is uh, why SDP this is fine from the uh, for the hepatitis delta virus. Uh, this is for the the, the virus one. Uh, this is. Uh, SDP. Uh, in this time, I tried to study about the, the also the structure. How I mean the maximum, the potential structure of this SDP with the some specific sequence uh, from the study. So uh, the Amorhead. This is the also the our group in Japan uh, who work also in the sama uh, sama kita with one. Uh, I focus in the SDP and then my uh, the group is uh, almost in the Amorhead ribosome. This is the. Uh, why the Amharic uh, ribosome? Because the Amharic, uh, Amharic is actually the smallest one. This is just around uh, then uh, less than 30 uh, nucleotide RNA. The main and this can be used. So mana is a very I mean the chance to uh, be uh, asterophytic because it's too big. It's because you know the RNA is actually unstable, so easy to degrade it uh, in the some certain condition. This is the uh, the Amharic. So and then the Amharic as uh, this is uh, this more focus for SIV because of this actually uh, last time uh, that's why uh, last time is easy to get a job for me uh, because I focus in ribosome at that time because the booming of the how people work on RNA uh, so last time when I try apply uh, all the I mean the work uh, in the United States many offer. Uh, Hamid, you can join this, and then we have some project with ribosome, Amorhide ribosome, and then the, to, to find, I mean, to develop the, the, the agent, huh? uh, like this, I can be. Huh? So, and this is the high motor because this is at the, at the time is very challenging. Even now, actually, the clinical trial of this ribosome, uh, some uh, ribosome already done, huh? uh, already done, especially for the SIV. Yeah? So, uh, so this is the uh, application, the biological application, the chemical biological application. So this is the application. This application is some actually because of uh, based on the clipping. Eh? This come the cleavage of the uh, messenger RNA. So of course, this is ribosome. The other one, there is some for the ribosome. This is just not based on clipping, but based on the binding. But so some ligand, and then they can chain to the conformation chain, and then the disrupt of the reaction. Uh, this is. Uh, and then the other one also the as you can like like B this is uh, unclated this is uh, the process of like the uh, with the some modification with the how to make uh, apa uh, this from the RNA and then just add the the ribosome and then the process of the uh, translation or the gene expression will be disrupted. Mm. So. Okay, and then uh, this is the ribosome, and then the other one. Okay, I just uh, talk. Because uh, again, just because the okay, just uh, this is the uh, ribosome, eh? ribosome. Eh? This is the of course, also this is the uh, one of the important thing regarding the uh, how to make uh, this, but different with the uh, ribosome because ribosome work as a uh, by cleavage, eh? uh, but this is the and this is by ribosome. How to make the structure is changed. Eh? Uh, this is the we call this. Uh, the first, uh, I mean, the, the common one is actually many uh, kind of the uh, ribosweets RNA. This is one of the, the I focused last time when I was in the United States. It is actually the T-box, uh, the T-box system in the uh, process of in bacillus subtilis. Uh, this is one of the, so this is uh, how to make, uh, you know, uh, as you can see, this, and 
of course this is uh, lebih kepada uh, regulatory ya. Yeah? This is the Bitibok regulation. So as you can see here, apa the uh, this is the the Tibok system in the the structure of the uh, RNA. Huh? This is the so. This is the, the model uh, of the reaction in Tibok mechanism that uh, our group in United States proposed uh, because of the how actually uh, the process uh, of the uh, uh, translation of the process of the transform the uh, gene expression from the uh, the gene. So as you know, uh, this is the one of the you can see so the blue one is actually this uh, upper, uh, the tRNA structure and then this is the uh, RNA uh, the, this is non coding RNA this is non coding RNA this is RNA this is, uh, so how the the the, the system the T box system actually this is this con you know in the translation you may know so uh, mananya the tRNA will be bind with the uh, specific uh, codon and tyrone with the with the special uh, specified loop uh, in the loop they can bind and then they can translate to uh, with the some appropriate uh, amino acid uh, because for it uh, tRNA they have I mean it amino acid they have some uh, specific tRNA they are binding so this is uh, actually uh, for this system, this is depend on the ratio of the chart and unchart of the tRNA. Uh, so, mananya, if the you know once of the tRNA in the the three end of the the bind with the some I mean, I say they will be disrupted of the uh, the binding with the uh, uh, position of the specific RNA. So, mananya can disrupt. So, mananya there is no uh, I mean uh, no binding, and then so mananya all the process will be going. Uh, uh, I mean, will be, will be terminate. Uh, we, we are sorry, uh, we be terminate. There's a termination, uh, termination, and then we terminate. There is no more. Uh, uh, so, but if the, the low chart of the tRNA is no, no amino acid, so maknanya this, the, this tRNA, especially in it, will be uh, slime bind with loop and then also bind with the other particle. And then the, there is some conformation change in the RNA that we can, they can rubah menjadi anti terminator. So once binding, uh, the, the process of the retro, the process of translation, the process of the, the maturation of the messenger will be disrupted. And then uh, there is no more, uh, uh, apa, uh, sorry, uh, anti terminator they will stop. So maknanya dia akan uh, tak stop ya, anti terminator because anti terminate and then the retro and then the, dia akan jalan terus. This is the, the process of TIBOC. So what I study in the United actually to, uh, to find, uh, to try to, uh, I mean, this is the, I mean, the one of the, apa, uh, the challenging to uh, design uh, uh, what kind of to uh, as a artificial RNA to make a disruption of this uh, binding uh, with the sum uh, we call the, that's why we try to uh, make the create uh, as our group uh, this is the, so this is the I mean the discovery uh, this is uh, of course this is just the simple one how to make mananya to make uh, to disruption so mana there is some termination of the uh, apa, uh, the process. So this is the model that I uh, try uh, in our group in uh, in Ohio State. Uh, this is the one of the small uh, anti terminator uh, from this. Actually, uh, I try study with the uh, that uh, some tRNA from the Bacillus subtilis. This is tyrosine, and then try to find the binding. And then uh, from this, actually, we can find the I mean the specific bind, the specific sequence uh, from this, and then try to. Uh, so this is all the thing actually the uh, like this ABCD this is the tRNA and then try to minimum because actually the important thing from this actually how to this uh, ACCU binding with the uh, anti terminator uh, uh, and then UGA this is actually the, the strategy of the how to as a uh, therapeutic agent. So uh, oh, okay this is no this is the small interference this is the, the I say just the information for you regarding the. Uh, the clinical trial have been done uh, for the some certain uh, non-coding RNA as, as a catalytic. Eh? So uh, another thing, because I think for this aftermer, I am uh, for this time because the time is uh, almost that one one uh, one hour because we need. Uh, huh? So this is maybe I want to because this is also the challenge of the uh, how to uh, get the artificial RNA eh, as a. Uh, RNA catalysis, uh, is RNA catalytic. This is the as you know the afternoon is also the chain. Uh, so I as time uh, this is a, a few of the because I combine how to make the 
isomer in the ribozyme because this is uh, i think this is for this in detail this is very challenging especially for the uh, we can work with the uh, also from the pump tech also if from the, the pump plant also all the, the i mean the the department on this colia this can be work together to how to make uh, optimal the uptime so from the part the uh, from the basic uh, medical science is how to create the aptam that can be used for it and then from the other part and then how to create the uh, especially last time uh, i dengar uh, dalam uh, previous uh, copy talk uh, regarding the mic uh, microfluidic this is this is also the, the important thing because if it's expensive it really can be used as a sensor for a diagnostic last time i i have thinking i mean uh, 20 years ago to, to develop the microfluidic use the aptimer. This is the aptimer, also this is the DNA, uh, RNA DNA. I think uh, to say, uh, apa, uh, for RP, this is uh, regarding the sharing. This is actually many things that uh, I can share uh, with you all regarding the uh, RNA as a uh, catalysis because this is uh, the challenge, uh, because this is the, the process. The, uh, my, uh, later I will, uh, I will uh, share again regarding because the time is, uh, is too much. Eh? to i mean uh, it's, so it's difficult with to uh, talk in the uh, various of background but of course uh, this is very challenging huh? uh, to talk and to share our uh, so madanya kita bekerja because you know the great is actually come not from the the same uh, discipline the, the great is actually come from the multidiscipline uh, this why there is uh, why uh, the, the most fee or the, the the high education they provide for the uh, multidiscipline is very high for the grant huh? This is how we work together huh, to find some uh, the target. Okay, this is uh, that can be. Uh, so I open uh, because this is I mean uh, it's very limited time to 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 I mean just cover the all yeah, that I have been work uh, especially on RNA as a catalyzer. <coughs> okay, to jadi terima kasih banyak. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So ini soalan yang dari jasa. Actually, uh, from this area, uh, I open uh, discuss and as lalu nya uh, after I they always uh, discuss. Just people come to the my room and then they discuss and then how to make some uh, research uh, to get this. Okay, assalamualaikum. Thank you, Dr. Amit. Uh, very interesting and very informative uh, uh, research. Yeah, so hopefully it, it can be uh, conduct in our uh, this research, kind of research can be conduct in our kuliah. So maybe any uh, questions from all of you. Any questions? Maybe I can start with my first questions, Ramit. Yes. So this 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 uh, ribosome, yeah, uh, 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 was, uh, ribosome, yeah. Ribosome. Uh, ribosome. Ribosome is different. Ribosome is actually one of kind of the uh, ri ribosome. Ribosome. Uh, ribosome. Any any studies on diabetes for for this ribosome? Ribosome. Di yeah, for diabetes. Uh, so that's why when we took the, the ribosome, uh, so uh, how to apply the ribosome, we have to know about the first, uh, the mechanism of the disease. Uh, yeah. uh, if we know the mechanism, is actually why this is uh, actually, actually the, it's potential to do the, the I mean, the, how to apply the ribosome, uh, uh, especially related to the, uh, of course, uh, even I, sekarang ini, uh, Ribosome uh, recently lebih uh, more in uh, focus in the uh, what we call uh, for the virus infection. Uh, how to treat the virus infection because this how to cut the process of the DNA replication, uh, RNA replication or DNA replication. Uh, this is the I mean the uh, when the purpose of the but is that uh, that's a meaning impossible to because one is now about the I mean uh, there is some genetic in I mean in the uh, diabetes. Uh, that's why we can uh, find the, the what kind of the ribozyme uh, that uh, process in the uh, genetic part. Mm. Yes, selanjutnya this way. Uh, tapi they, actually this is not only ribozyme because tadi uh, the non-coding RNA is not only ribozyme. There is some uh, another part and then uh, like uh, circular. Circular is more uh, maybe more than applicable for the uh, or related with the the, the kidney, uh, uh, the kidney or or the the cardio. Uh, uh, the heart, uh, the heart disease, because uh, why no most of the people also they they, they focus on the mitochondria, uh, mitochondria because it is actually the the dalam mitochondria there is some money uh, RNA. Yeah. Okay, maybe uh, from others, maybe any questions? Okay, Dr. Hamid. Uh, yeah. Salam. Salam ya. Salam. Assalamualaikum. Salam. Uh, Salam. Yeah, 
for coming. Uh, thank you. Hey, thank you very pamit much pamit. for your present. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, I found it is very refreshing uh, listening to your presentation, especially related to ribozyme. Um, do you have any idea or your own experience? As you mentioned before, you used to work with ribozyme. Uh, um, into diagnostic because at the moment I'm working with uh, a ribozyme base or a modification of ribozyme that they call it uh, uh -huh. multiple nucleic acid enzyme to use it in the diagnostic. Um, any any comment from you or have you um, involved yourself in the um, diagnostic uh, for by using okay. the ribozyme? I think uh, it would be nice to see is how Maybe next meet, we can meet up to see how you can uh, maybe uh, you know come out with the essay for for that um, uh, MNSM or ribozyme based uh, diagnostic. Okay, thank you. I think this is the good question regarding the how to develop our ribozyme as a diagnostic yeah? because most of actually we, are, we think about the the diagnostic. So from uh, until now actually ribozyme is most uh, I mean the uh, be more in uh, focus in the therapeutic. Yeah? therapeutic rather than the the the, the diagnostic uh, because the based on the, the how they work based on the mechanism of the work of the ribozyme huh? because this is the but actually there is one uh, i mean the challenging of uh, regarding the rna that can be used for diagnosis actually aptamer because uh the idea aptamer is very specific itself this is but i have been uh, work uh, on the aptamer last time this is same like uh, rna but how they work actually just uh, based on the, the binding, not there is no clipic reaction. Because this is challenging. Because the uh, you know most of the the diagnostic they have to diagnose how to the uh, I mean diagnose some uh, what kind of the specific agent in the uh, some disease, isn't it? Uh, that's why uh, this is the one important thing actually. This more in I mean the most challenging is actually how to develop the epidermal. Uh, this is my if, even actually the ribosome now they, they combine how to with the aptamer huh? they combine with the aptamer they combine we call, they call the enzyme the ribosome combine the aptamer how to work with together uh, this is the, the challenge this is possible it's not uh, possible but uh, for my uh, my opinion or my, my suggestion actually uh, how to work with the aptamer because this many of the aptamer that now uh, work uh, because some other what we call the infection of disease uh, we can uh, try to find with the, the diagnostic uh, last time actually uh, I tried to I mean to the simple one because most of the like like the COVID nineteen because this is the how actually to make uh, because the the timer this is uh, we compare with the between the antibody and antigen hmm? uh, this is the how actually at the timer this are in it tadi saya tak sempat because the, the time is very limited uh, this is I, I want to walk I mean to explain just special i mean the the aptamer itself because how the process how to because this is uh, like, like last time we have to share in the usm and then now alhamdulillah the usm that go with the aptamer and then uh, last time in uitm also there's some uh, certain uh, like they like want to study open aptamer but this is a uh, time to to make aptamer so uh, this is where do you come from Tata? I'm from uh, Kuli of Nursing, uh, but in the basic medical sciences. Ah, basic medical, yeah. this is the basic medical sciences. Okay, huh. this is very uh, challenging. So, my name of time, but this is the simple one. Because from the aptamer, uh, we can uh, try to find the, the small RNA that can be as a diagnostic agent. Huh? Uh, this are but uh, this is very uh, challenging to find. Uh, whatever this is, and then, uh, but uh, not most of the, because the young uh, like, like ribozyme, CRNA, microRNA, uh, microRNA can be used as the biomarker. Uh, micro RNA can be some okay. my marker uh, because they just binding how to bind huh? uh, with the sure. specific and to disrupt it. Uh, yep. uh, is more just uh, kita pakai the clipic reaction, uh, uh, reaction yep. and then how to cut how to interrupt the the reaction. Uh, uh, there is no more reaction in uh, the system. Okay, so, um, I just want to share my uh, previous uh, project was with a uh, ribozyme a hammerhead. Mm -hmm. Ribozyme, yes. Mm -hmm. Where, yeah, where there is some modification of the loop itself, where yes. the loop is um is in the loop, but they cut it into half so yes. that it can be incorporated into the sensor, where the sensor is yes. actually can be detected to the uh DNA biomarker. Exactly. So that, yeah. So we, we did explore that, but now uh yes. working on it as well to improvise uh the method. Shama. Okay. This is good. Yeah. This is good because uh, we. 
uh, the dynamic based on the the product that clip it right the how the biosensor uh, detect the sensor or that's why this is we, we can work together with the uh, what we call the with the person from the tech uh, pamam tech uh, special from the technology from engineering uh, how to uh, develop the biosensor we as uh, apa uh, yang the, from the basic science just how to create the, the ribosome huh? the ribosome the small especially the amaret because amaret is very uh, very uh, i mean very interesting because it's small small and then easy to to to, to handle uh, last time my our group is to i mean create this more smaller because it's 32 more smaller this we call the mini zyme just a few of them the mini zyme other there is a from the one my, my colleague this is amontok uh, this try to find the the amaret with the smallest smallest of the the structure so boleh ada so maknanya so the clipic pas uh, but the diagnostic is based on the the product the clipic product how the make the sensation uh, i mean the the internal uh, intensity of the the clipper this is also can be used uh, for uh, thank you is, uh, this is uh, i'm very happy this is uh, because i last time i couldn't find all the people i mean uh, the researcher in the malaysia work and yes. arrive time uh, yes, same so same goes to me. When I come uh -huh. back here, um, I, I'm so happy, so much, uh, you know, refreshing to listen to your presentation and happy uh -huh. to to look at, um, you know, your progression into ribozyme. Shama, we see you again. Shalom, Shana. This is okay. We can work together and then try to find and then the then to develop the uh the hammer ribozyme, especially for HIV, maybe for uh for the uh COVID. Eh? Shama, thank you. Shalom. Nanti I I I I want to share that regarding the the ephemeral also. Huh. Okay. Thank that's you. Right. All right. Welcome. Nice. Okay. I think uh, the time already uh, finished, yeah, uh, Dr. Amit. Yes. So, thank you. Uh, I'm happy that uh, that uh, people can meet here, yeah, and then find the collaborators here, yeah. So actually, this one is already announced to all kuliah. This uh, talk to Dr. Okay, um, uh, we continue with uh, going forward to the next uh, presentation yeah, by uh, Dr. Uh, Muhammad, Assistant Professor Dr. Muhammad Hassan Abdul Aziz El Naim yeah, from the Department of Medical Practice. Title is the Quality of Medicine, Current Research and Future Directions. So welcome, uh, Dr. El Naim. The floor is yours now. Uh, okay, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Alfi, uh, for the kind introduction. Uh, let me share my screen first. Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, Today may be quite different topic from the basic medical science when it comes to uh, maybe use of uh, therapeutics or drugs in practice. So the title today, inshallah, will talk about quality use of medicine, current research and uh, future uh, direction. So first of all, just maybe a brief introduction uh, about myself. I have a bachelor and from the from Egypt, postgraduate certificate from Harvard Medical School, USA. I have I'm alumni for, for IIM. I got my PhD in uh, 2018. Currently, assistant professor of clinical pharmacy in the Department of Pharmacy Practice. Uh, I'm also leader for quality use of medicine research group, member of the FIP uh, academic pharmacy section, associate member in the Malaysian Pharmacist Society, editorial board member in some journal, and section editor in the pharmacy practice in the Collier Journal. Uh, to date, I have about maybe 50 journal articles in different journals. So uh, today, inshallah, the talk will mainly be divided into three main sections. The first section, we will talk about maybe general introduction about qualities of medicine, the definition, uh, what qualities of medicine can be different from country to another. And uh, we will have some reflection also on the effort done in the Malaysian setting uh, related to qualities of medicine. The second, the second, um, the second section, inshallah, will highlight some of, uh, of my uh, on the, my group work on the qualities of medicine and research. We'll share a few examples. So it will be maybe uh, quite new for potential collaboration in future, inshallah. 
And the last one, uh, we will highlight the ongoing uh, research and future direction. If everyone is ready, we can uh, move uh, further, inshallah. First, quality of medicine, usually the definition or the most widely accepted definition, the, the definition was already proposed earlier on by the Australian National Strategy on Quality of Medicine. When they define quality of medicine under three main categories. The first one, to screen and select the management option wisely. Consider what, what actually the actual benefit or the net benefit of medicine when, when it comes to treatment of any illness and recognize the broad option of um, maybe therapeutics involving medicine in treating any disorder. So selecting the management option wisely. The second one is when, when it deemed necessary the medicine to be used, uh, how to choose the best available option, how to consider all the factors may be related to the individual, the clinical condition itself, the risk and benefits, the monitoring consideration, the dosage and length of treatment, coexisting condition and cost uh, at various aspects. This is very important. And uh, the third one, using medicine safely and effectively. And this actually most the practical one, most of the qualities of medicine research uh, by somehow looking for uh, some uh, uh, research or maybe research question related to this one. How maybe the, the safety and if, uh, effectiveness of the medicine on the long term run. Uh, from the monitoring perspective can, for minimizing misuse, overuse or underuse of certain medication, or maybe empower people to, to use medicine uh, properly maybe providing medicine information and raising awareness about the rational use of medicine in general. So this, this, uh, this would be the three main definition or the three main uh, aspect under the definition of quality use of medicine. In general, when it comes to research and quality use of medicine area, uh, the research can be descriptive to assess or to describe certain prescribing pattern in, in healthcare settings can also go further to investigate potential barriers and facilitators uh, for the rational me uh, medicine use, or can be the experimental one. Mostly this one will be the, 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 the level of PhD when you design or assess impact of intervention on improving qualities of medicine and rational prescribing in healthcare settings. Or as I mentioned, uh, empowering people or promoting awareness toward the safe and effective use of medication. Uh, so the people can be more adherent, uh, they find the necessary information they are looking at, and also uh, improving and uh, posting the health uh, literacy level in the community. So as we all know that so many studies can, can be done on medicine according to the life cycle, but the one I, I can uh, maybe bold, uh, show in bold here, uh, this is the one is most relevant to the quality use of medicine research. When you do some, conduct some study to maybe investigate the extent of the rational prescribing of certain medication, to assess a patient adherence or resistance, to, com to do comparative effectiveness and safety of certain medication, and as I mentioned, the impact of interventions and some, some of the comparisons sometimes can be cross-national one. Of course, quality of medicine is a general term. And when, uh, when we want to intervene to, um, to enhance safety and effectiveness, of course, this one should be based on a clear plan. Clear plan, maybe how to improve. So how to improve actually should be based on uh, what we call key action area or the area of focus, major area of focus that uh, usually problem with using medicine will come from this area. According to the WHO, uh, maybe this uh, may be uh, the document on global patient safety challenge, the global issues in using medicine in the, in the issue uh, of the statement of medication without harm, where researcher or maybe uh, qualities of medicine research should be directed, polypharmacy, high risk situations and transition of care. What do you mean by this one? So if, if we go to the first one, polypharmacy, I think that data or statistics even from developed country indicated that maybe we have at least four in 10 people who aged five, 50 years or above, 
they use at least five medication. And one in 10 of this population will have 10 medication or more. This actually may be, as, as the number increase, the potential problem uh, with using the medicine, of course, increase. The high risk, uh, high risk medicine refer to certain medication that usually any error with their use, any error even with, with the regular use can lead to significant patient harm. And this, uh, or, or again, will be de dependent or different from country to another. For example, um, in Australia, for example, they, they define the high-risk medicine, uh, maybe the, the insulin, the opioid analgesics, the anticoagulants, the antipsychotics, something like this. The third area would be the transition of care. Transition of care refer actually to the differences in medicine use from one setting to another. For example, patient at home going to the hospital or patient in hospital will be discharged. For example, in patient at home going to the hospital, 90% of those patients will have a change at least in one medication. The other way around, if patient coming from maybe uh, uh, the hospitalization finish and going to discharge, the patient, 42% of this patient will have at least prescribed one medicine that have potential problem, potential uh, harm in, in a given case. This data, this uh, data statistics from developed country. Also a recent analysis from New Zealand can, can show us that in general, in general practice, we can see around 11%, 11% medication related harm incidents happen. Uh, the good point that around 80% of this medication related harm will be something we can say minor or, but, the rest, around 20%, moderate to severe. What the medication that mostly implicated in, in medication-related harm, again, the cardiovascular anticoagulants and antineoplastic immunomodulatory and so many medication. When it comes to Malaysia, I think maybe uh, as, as the disease burden uh, and the pattern of this uh, in, in Malaysia, we can, see, we, we can see here the cardiovascular disease uh, followed by malignancy, and also we have maybe diabetes. So this is the burden, the burden of disease uh, by mortality. Uh, if we go maybe to take some statistics on the top 50 medication or therapeutic groups used in Malaysian settings, we can also say, uh, we can see here, uh, medication for diabetes, uh, cardiovascular one, uh, calcium channel blocker, and uh, renin angiotensin receptor blocker, lipid modifying agent, diabetics, and all this. And the good point, actually, in, in Malaysia, we have maybe some some sort of uh, planning or policy to uh, to address or to maybe support research and support the practitioner in the quality use of medicine. Uh, one of them is the guidelines on the safe use of high alert medication. High alert medication, again, the same I, I have defined earlier, those medication that mostly any problem with their use will lead to significant patient harm. So these guidelines is very, uh, is, is very maybe quite comprehensive. They identify the risk factor actually uh, may be implicated in, in high alert medication, what, what, what it takes uh, for, for medication to be high risky for uh, patients. And also they provide, uh, this one is very important, they provide for every medication what the common type of error, what the common risk factor for this certain medication and what are the recommendations, how we can prevent the harm uh, can happen with this medication. This is actually a very, uh, very good step that taken to post the, the quality use of medicine in, in the setting. Uh, quality use of medicine in, in, in a hospital, for example, uh, it is a team and it is a systematic process. It is not uh, maybe one, uh, one, one spot initiative and research and we go. Actually, it has to, to be a systematic process. This systematic process should identify first what are the issues, what, what are the concerns in this setting. As I mentioned, from country to another, from setting to another, the problem, the issues will be different. The medication will be different. So first identify what are the issues, and then what are the best practice standards we can we can we can uh, we can refer to. Then we collect and analyze the data 
provide some feedback and identify and implement the change that that could be done and the monitoring how the change will be sustained in in the long uh, in the long term if we want to see this plan the systematic plan um, to match with the pyramid for quality use of medicine competencies the quality use of medicine first uh, it is awareness level you can see here awareness level uh, at the level of identifying the issue we 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 know where the problem we study the problem uh, we aware where where the problem and what the potential intervention that can be done the level two going up the knowledge and skills when you collect analyze data provide feedback this actually when it when it comes to maybe prepare and the education and competencies for for uh, for research to to come and uh, take uh, take place and of course with with competent uh, maybe practitioner they have the knowledge and skills we can maybe have uh, the level of action and evaluation implement the change and the, the continuous monitoring for uh, for any implemented change so i think maybe that's the first part of uh, of the talk uh, introduction to quality use of medicine hopefully by by this how at least we, the, this our audience today have maybe some background about quality use of medicine the definition and the, the basic uh, aspect of the process in this in the next um, section i will we share one uh, some of uh, of uh, our uh, our research in quality use of medicine uh, divided into maybe four main four main maybe focus area the first one uh, my my personal interest and my passion the cardiovascular pharmacotherapy when we do some uh, some project uh, on the use of lipid lowering therapy lipid lowering therapy and the statin and all this uh, we want uh, as I mentioned, under the, the, the research objective quality use of medicine, here we assess uh, the prescribing pattern and also at the same time, the achievement of clinical outcome. Of course, we give maybe lipid lowering therapy to, to, to notice some uh, maybe changes in the lipid parameters and uh, achieve the target level as per the patient condition. We can see, for example, uh, our research, uh, this done in the primary care settings, we have maybe in general um, around 87% received statin already. Uh, uh, appropriate prescribing was 70% only. 17.5% um, of patients, they already have some sort of concurrent drug interaction with the given uh, medication. And uh, the most important, and this may be chronic uh, problem with this, uh, statin users, and this epidemic in general, the achievement at the target uh, LDL level. So only 37% were able to achieve the target level. This may be, uh, again, this some sort of analysis, how the medication and the clinical outcome can be, uh, can be seen together for further uh, assessment. Uh, in hospital setting, again, it is different. As I mentioned in the transition of care, uh, usually the medication or the, the, the pattern of medication use in primary setting and hospital setting is quite different. So in hospital setting, for example, the, 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 the percentage is quite maybe less than the primary case setting. And we have one third of patients who were eligible to receive uh, the medication will not actually prescribe the medication from the beginning. They didn't take the medication uh, at least. Uh, drug interaction, uh, a bit higher compared to the primary care setting, the drug interaction here, it's about 26%. And uh, the renal dose adjustment or some modification in the dose given should be uh, maybe considered in about 5% of the cases. We go further to, to see maybe how, how this, um, maybe from the prescriber perspective, from the healthcare professional, how um, maybe we can intervene at this level to improve further uh, the statin, so we uh, the statin prescribing. So we have uh, conduct one maybe educational intervention, educational outreach for healthcare professional, and uh, we assess knowledge uh, pre and post, and uh, we provide some educational program. In general, our education program actually was able to uh, maybe to increase the participant knowledge and uh, maybe to target some areas 
that usually the, 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 the knowledge or the clinical knowledge regarding this particular area was not maybe uh, at the level. For example, the timing of taking statin, we have the perception that all statin should be taken at night. But usually some, uh, uh, in fact, some statin, atovastatin, for example, can be taken at any time. It is not necessary at night. This one, one of the, the point, the drug interaction and how the drug interaction is different between different statin. This also one, one, one point we, we, focus, uh, we focus on. And we identify actually from prescriber perspective, the safety concern, the side effects uh, as a common cause for them to, to discontinue treatment in a given patient. Uh, later on, we also maybe have, have this um, maybe academic detailing program uh, assessment or education intervention the assessment uh, in terms of the actual prescribing we go to the maybe the hospital settings here and there and we see whether uh, what what kind of intervention we have done uh, have impacted uh, the practice or not so maybe hopefully the, in the, the percentage the per, uh, fortunately the percentage of the appropriate prescribing of statin according to this working definition was actually seen to be uh, improved after uh, uh, after our intervention. Um, also, maybe in the area of cardiovascular pharmacotherapy, we have we have done some work on the hypertension uh, management uh, during the pandemic, and how the socio demographic of of patients can 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 play role actually for for the patients to attain control and to be eff affected negatively by uh, by the pandemic and the hypertension control. We do some we do some work. I think this this one uh, maybe I must assume from Dr. Karim and uh, awareness of the risk factor of heart attack among the general public, and this our collaborative work with a colleague in Saudi Arabia. When we see uh, in deep uh, the statin food interaction, statin food interaction uh, from the public perspective, how the public, how the users of statin are knowledgeable and uh, maybe the information, as I mentioned in the very beginning, in the qualities of medicine, the information and the health literacy regarding the medication itself, uh, also we conduct, uh, we conduct this work. Uh, this may be quite briefly our work in the cardiovascular uh, area. Also, we, we have some work on the diabetes, of course, this is my, uh, my, uh, my second focus area. Uh, we, uh, we do some work on maybe the recommendation for managing diabetes um, during the pandemic. And we, we, we highlight actually all the potential adjustment in the pharmacotherapy that should be considered. What are the issues? How, the, how can the pharmacist uh, provide support for diabetes patient in general and in the post pandemic era? Also, we have maybe uh, do some work on the evidence synthesis um, regarding uh, maybe uh, some reviews on the renal outcome associated with the non-insulin non anti-diabetic pharmacotherapy. And we were able to classify all the anti-diabetic uh, into three main uh, categories. Uh, some of them actually uh, were found to be renal protective. They have maybe good impact on the renal outcome. Uh, some of them had no additional risk and no, no much more maybe worry to, to use in patients with renal function. And of course, some will be associated with decline in renal parameters and we provide recommendation uh, for each. Also, we link about uh, maybe the cardiovascular prevention and uh, patient with diabetes and how uh, actually uh, the awareness of patients and the perception toward the cardiovascular risk among diabetic patients. And in this paper, we, we, we were able to identify actually many knowledge gaps of, starting from the basic disease expectation at the time of the diagnosis, identification of the cardiovascular risk factor on the management aspect. All these points, the, the, the patients still need support, still need support to, to, be, uh, to be able to comprehend and act uh, properly with respect to this point. Uh, also, maybe we found the differences uh, when we provide support to patients, we have also to, to take into account that their knowledge and perception can be impacted by the patient demographic characteristics, educational race, age, and area of residence. All this play role and they need individualized uh, intervention. Uh, also, we have some work on the proton pump inhibitor uh, as a group, pantoprazole, isomeprazole, and all this. 
Uh, this our first paper when, when we talk about evaluation of the photon pump inhibitor prescribing among non-critically ill hospitalized patients in Malaysian uh, tertiary setting. And in this paper, uh, we, we were able to evaluate the prescribed regimen and uh, maybe categorize them. Um, we can see here that from the figure about 34% only were uh, maybe appropriate or no need to any change or maybe was compliance uh, with the guidelines. And 19% was totally, totally not uh, according to the guidelines. 16% uh, 16, 16 uh, still need those adjustments. And 31%, and this actually the main finding, was um, uh, prescribed with no clear indication, no clear indication, no documented indication. And we come, we come out with some recommendation that we need proper documentation of evidence-based indication for using this medication in clinical practice. And also we need for a well-defined prescribing criteria to be used in local setting so we can import, uh, improve the rational prescribing. Also, we, we did this one with my uh, colleague, uh, Dr. Aib, uh, an evaluation the prescribed or protein pump inhibitor for uh, maybe as a stress ulcer prophylaxis. And in this paper, we're able to show that around 30% were prescribed to the, according to the current recommendation. But still, maybe we need a national criteria to address and to highlight more on the proper indication and PPI dosage regimen for both ICU or non-ICU uh, patients. Uh, the last point in our research, I can maybe highlight the quality use of medicine, um, maybe in general, when it comes to adherence and clinical outcomes or what comes to service provision. For example, I, we did some uh, collaborative work with my colleague in Egypt. Uh, on assessing how the clinical pharmacy service uh, for patient outpatient and, and hemodialysis can be of benefit. So we, we see here um, that the clinical pharmacy team were able to identify in total about 685 drug-related problem. Most commonly, the problem will maybe something related to the dose or the drug selection itself, the drug selection itself. And in terms of the clinical outcome, the clinical outcome improvement on the, maybe the calcium level and hemoglobin level were noted, but it is not, it is not the same actually uh, for the phosphorus level. Um, also, we have, we have done some uh, randomized control trial uh, with um, focusing on use of on citron for pain management. And this was one of the interesting paper, because in this paper actually, we propose that uh, on Dancitron, on top, on top of being maybe medication for nausea and vomiting, as all of us know, also it has some adjuvant or analgesic efficacy when adds when it adds to uh, the acetaminophen, and it has actually local anesthetic effect uh, as well. So in this uh, in this paper, we were able to show uh, that on Dancitron, on top of acetaminophen uh, only can improve actually the pain control for patient uh, after the lap, uh, laparoscopic cholecystectomy. Uh, also, we have maybe done some, uh, some work on the pharmacist-led intervention. What pharmacists can, can, can contribute for patient with hypertension and hyperlipidemia? What kind of intervention that the pharmacist can do? And uh, we characterize all the intervention and we compare uh, so we found maybe most most of the time face to face counseling was was the most. This actually this paper was just before the pandemic, uh, but most interesting the multifaceted intervention in general will more likely to be effective. And this one I think we I will highlight later in the future direction when it comes to integrated and collaborative care. Uh, the outcome assessment for any pharmacist uh, or, or any intervention uh, will will be different. Uh, according to maybe the intervention design itself, the frequency of the follow-up, the length of the follow-up, the involved medication, the patient characteristics, all this play a role whether the clinical outcome will be, will be uh, achieved or not. Uh, I think the last one in this category, the, the one related uh, also uh, adherence and clinical outcomes, how it is impacted by the medication regimen simplification. Medication regimen simplification in general, 
uh, any chronic disease patient, the hypertension or even with diabetes, it is common now to, to have maybe fixed dose combination, for example, two drugs in one tablet, something like this, or once daily dosing, or even combination uh, between both. So we did maybe a um, maybe systematic review for, uh, review for the literature, and we identify actually the frequency of each. And I also, we link this one to the medication adherence and clinical outcome. So in general, medication regimen simplification is as a strategy, it is useful, it is visible, something easy to be done. But uh, as a clinical outcome, actually it is not necessarily or consistently will be improved as the adherence improve, especially when the length of the follow-up uh, is, uh, is different. So I think that's all regarding the second point of, of my talk. So first, we cover the introduction to quality use of medicine. The first, uh, maybe I, I did overview of the selected uh, quality use of medicine uh, research. Now we we'll proceed further to, uh, to the last part of my talk today. Uh, I will just highlight a few aspects regarding the research grants. Research grants that uh, may be uh, completed till now for this for, for myself as a principal or co-researcher. Uh, this is our work on the lipid lowering therapy. We have two grants and we completed this one uh, already. And uh, we have grants in progress. The, the one related to the RCVX, the, the Quality Use of Medicine Research Group. When we, we have maybe multi-component actually project, improving quality use of medicine for, uh, uh, for the prescribed pharmacotherapy for patients with chronic disease, a multifaceted approach. We have, I think, uh, maybe a conversation in this project focusing on knowledge and practice of medication waste and disposal. This, uh, I think, a leader by Dr. Uh, Carmela and Dr. Hedaya. And we have this one uh, um, on the medication regime complexity and medication adherence among geriatric patients. The leader uh, for this one is Dr. Aid. Um, a few examples, I will maybe also display a few examples of my uh, recent work. This ongoing uh, project, ongoing project, um, the first project we, we, uh, we, will uh, we are developing and implementing a mobile health intervention for adherence and cell care behaviors among type 2 diabetes patients. This actually, my, my recent PhD uh, student is working on it. I have also two research st uh, students working on um, mental health, type 2 diabetes, and rule of community pharmacies, this qualitative study informed by the health belief model. Uh, we have also another project on mental health and blood pressure control and antihypertensive medication adherence as a cross-sectional study. Also, I'm supervising one external student in Pakistan. Uh, he's working on uh, maybe diabetes educator, pharmacist as a diabetes educator, how the physician and the patient uh, perceive this one. Also, I have maybe FRGS a proposal, not, not, uh, not good funded yet, on the augmented reality model to improve uh, health literacy and pharmacotherapy uh, adherence in patients with diabetes. And they have maybe international research group. We do some work on the pharmacy uh, education. This, the mental well-being and great among undergraduate pharmacy students, this international, international work. The last uh, part, uh, the future direction. Actually, in, in quality use of medicine research, there are so many future trends. Um, first, the integrated care. Integrated care, uh, actually the idea is based on when it comes to diabetes, for example, diabetes is very complex, very complex. We can see here, we have a range of maybe metabolic abnormalities happen together and we have many differences in the baseline between patients. And by time, even the, 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 the situations or the clinical scenario become even more complicated when the complications start to happen. So all this can, cannot be solved by one, one, uh, one prospective approach. So it needs uh, integrated care. Integrated care refers to maybe all the healthcare uh, professionals come and share responsibility to improve the outcome in, in a given case. This one interesting paper uh, published in David Scale uh, on the aspect how the multi-component integrated care will, will, will be able to promote 
sustained improvement, sustained improvement in surrogate clinical outcome. And you can see here the team change when the team may be, uh, may be sharing and uh, taking responsibility to improve. This one, one of the point, uh, patient education, uh, patient empowerment to self-management, all this uh, may be our aspect to improve uh, the, the clinical outcome. Uh, also, this one is very interesting for us as a pharmacist. Uh, because this is a recent, a recent study done in the US when they ask patient in community pharmacy, uh, diabetes patient, um, their preference, what they prefer to, to, uh, to have maybe support from the community pharmacist when it comes to diabetes self-management education, diabetes self-management. So they, they survey the patient to see uh, how the patients uh, like to, uh, to interact with the community pharmacist in the setting. Uh, very uh, interesting. Uh, first of all, maybe as initial engagement, they can be contacted face to face. They can maybe uh, phone call or virtual call, as I will explain later. Uh, they prefer to have some flyers or some materials for for the information. Uh, the most interesting is here. Uh, what are the topics? The topics they want to engage with the community pharmacist. Uh, maybe many many of the top rated topics were actually not related to the clinical, maybe use of drugs, or something related to the healthy eating, uh, cooking classes, locating the abuse friendly food and all this stuff. So um, this could be a, a way or um, uh, a platform for pharmacists to interact with other healthcare professionals. If maybe as a pharmacy community, pharmacists have also uh, input or collaboration with dietitian and help maybe to address these needs, this would be uh, very, uh, very inter interesting under the umbrella of the integrated care. The second trend is of course the digital health. And digital health intervention for diabetes is something uh, maybe uh, is rapidly developing and we have maybe many of, uh, maybe we can say thousands of apps uh, over there. Uh, maybe some of them will be focusing on insulin management. You, you, you get some input and to this, this the kind of output, maybe uh, like the mealtime polars, the parameter change and all this or some directed actually to empowerment, to self-management, patient education, like maybe self-monitoring, the messaging or whatsoever. In, in this area, actually, uh, I'm sharing here one of the very interesting paper. Uh, if anyone interested, I can share. This regarding digital health and diabetes, everything to gain and nothing to lose. Actually, here they highlighted um, what potential potential benefit for every stakeholder in the diabetes management from using digital health. So patient, for example, less hypoglycemia, less glucose viability, and less excess weight gain, for example. Clinician will be less time spending and uh, less unscheduled visits, uh, visits, less time spent on non-clinical aspect of care, something like this. But this one actually should be interpreted with caution because as I mentioned in digital health, in mobile apps, for example, we have hundreds and sometimes thousands of apps on the on the uh, on the app store, for example. And it is not not all of them. Not all of them are of the same quality and are tested to improve any clinical outcome. You can see here uh, this the four key messages for for uh, from this review. They they highlight very maybe clearly. Although we have hundreds of apps for diabetes self-management, we only identified health outcome studies, means the app were, were tested to relate to the clinical outcome, only 11 of them, only 11 of them. And of these 11, only five were associated with clinically significant improvement in hemoglobin A1C, was, was found to have some impact on the clinical outcome. And more interesting, it is none of this study actually show any improvement in the quality of life, blood pressure, weight, BMI, which is maybe very frequent challenges in any patient with diabetes. And again, as a researcher, we have also to take note that in general, all most of these studies are short term and not tested for maybe longer uh, period. And they, they don't have maybe the robust uh, maybe design uh, in the very beginning. So we, so we have maybe compromised quality issue 
uh, with this uh, with this topic. So we can say digital health is a very promising, but at the same time, uh, it is very challenging to identify the 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 the, the apps that tested for a long time and were uh, shown to improve clinical outcome. The last point in the future direction, of course, uh, post-pandemic, we have the virtual and remote clinical care. Uh, now, as as we 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 are uh, maybe meeting here, we are meeting virtually. Maybe in the normal condition, we have this one face to face and something like this. So, virtual and uh, remote clinical care also will continue. Will continue and telehealth and telepharmacy and all this stuff will continue even after the pandemic become endemic and uh, and all this stuff. So I'm here just highlighting that uh, remote provision of pharmacy service actually is not something new. It is more than 20 years back, uh, telepharmacy or telecommunication uh, use in health has been started already. Uh, it is just uh, during the pandemic, we were, uh, we were subjected to um, significant increase in the uptake and implementation of this, uh, of this communication. For example, in US, for example, they, ha they highlighted before, before the pandemic, they have around 100, 100 telehealth visits per month. Now, or during the pandemic, they have around 1,200 in a day. You can, you can imagine how the increase. Uh, the, the, the issue or the point, the advantage of the telehealth, it can be customized. It can be customized to, to target pre-diabetes patients, so for healthy lifestyle or risk reduction uh, intervention, uh, targeting new patients, for example, or targeting high-risk patients according to the uh, category. Um, one, one of the maybe recent uh, studies also show that in, in telehealth, for example, patients can commonly uh, feel comfortable to, to using phone or any virtual platform. Uh, some designs use telepharmaceutical care associated with free home delivery of medication. They have maybe some kind of uh, virtual integrated care clinic uh, that, like the, the one adapted in Saudi Arabia. They have multidisciplinary telemedicine led by pharmacists. This one is very, very important. The telehealth or telepharmacy in general, unlike digital health, this one actually tested or maybe were able to support patients to achieve clinical outcome. So in terms of better DM control, improving medication adherence, and also maybe having achieved some objective or decreasing physical consultation from eight visit to two visit over four months, for example, all this has been, uh, has been achieved. Um, the one last point um, they found actually, uh, if the telehealth or the telecommunication was um, maybe done, but with less engagement time, for example, five minutes or something like this, this were, were not that effective. And actually when compared to telehealth by other professional pharmacist one is not also significantly different. So telehealth in general, Will be will be sufficient uh, uh, whether it is provided by uh, any of the healthcare professional or maybe most preferably would be the multidisciplinary one if possible. Uh, we can see maybe how well structured remote care can be there. Like for example, we can do some diabetes education webinar. This done by student pharmacists in US. Uh, they structure thirty minute class on weekly basis offer to patients with DM or BDM to, to support them. They provide this, this class every week, 30 minutes uh, via Zoom. They, they, over, they, they cover content from the very beginning overview, the disease managing diet importance, medication adherence, and all this. They also arrange for referral services for uh, University uh, Family Medicine Clinic uh, as well, and provide incentives and certification for, for patients who complete uh, the program. So this made a kind of a simple, well-structured uh, remote intervention that can be done or adapted in any setting, and even here in, in Malaysia as well. Uh, this is the last point in the remote care. This may be our latest paper this year about telepharmacy. 
we identify we surveyed some of the future Malaysian pharmacists and we found maybe uh, they are ready they are knowledgeable and ready to to uptake telepharmacy maybe uh, 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 more in in their future practice but the problem sometimes of the workload and incentives and the payment model uh, also were a significant concern among the participants so uh, my uh, my take home messages for, uh, for this session. Uh, quality use of medicine, essential component in clinical pharmacy research in general uh, to optimize outcomes, the effectiveness and ensure safety of medication. Uh, the intervention are based on a thorough examination of the sources of medication related harm. As I mentioned in the very beginning, in every setting, in every country, and from setting to another, the sources of medication related harm or the key action area for quality use of medicine could be different. So the examination is very important. Uh, quality use of medicine research domains are a kind of well-defined, well-defined domains, as I mentioned in the very beginning, but applications and analysis uh, can, can vary depending on the priorities in different settings or country. Uh, as an educator or as an academic, I think uh, pharmacy education is responsible to embed the, the quality use of medicine knowledge and application in future pharmacists to be maybe uh, of the mentality or the mindset of a medicine safety advocates in future, inshallah. Uh, this may be, uh, this might contact for any maybe further discussion or networking opportunities for, for myself or our research group. This my emails uh, and uh, social media accounts. I think that's all for me. Thank you so much. Uh, this picture actually from my home country. I think my home is out there. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, uh, Dr. El Naeb. Yeah, very uh, interesting uh, research and uh, informative uh, uh, presentation. Yeah. Uh, maybe any questions uh, from all of you? I think uh, I, uh, I will be the first one who will ask what, the question. Welcome, uh, Dr. Alf. Yes, um, uh, the first paper that you show to us that you uh, mentioned that only 30% of the type 2 diabetic patient uh, achieved the target of the LDL uh, cholesterol levels. Any reason why? Why is that? Because uh, 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 more than 80% of the patient has received the uh, appropriate drugs yeah? yes yes why only 30% yes uh, uh, actually uh, in in um, this is a common a common finding actually among among the bit patient because um, to achieve target ldl and sustain the achievement need proper yeah. adherence sometimes the patient can refill the medication take the medication or refill the medication from the primary care setting because this this uh, study was in primary care setting so they take the medication but they didn't take or they take on short term, but not on long term basis. Oh, okay. this, this is a problem. Uh, our analysis was actually a, a bit long term. So long term uh, analysis of, of the general uh, achievement of target uh, level level, usually very problematic because the patients, the patient to take the medication chronic long term is quite, quite uncommon. Quite uncommon, mm -hmm. especially, especially if uh, everything is okay, doesn't feel maybe anything. Because uh, as I mentioned, statin uh, is a preventive therapy, preventive therapy. So the patient take the medication without any symptoms. He, he, we want to prevent something from happening. So uh, it is not easy for patients to, uh, to remain ad adherent to the medication on long term. I think this is a primary use, uh, the primary use. Okay, maybe uh, we wait for questions from others. Any questions? Uh, okay, when I, I have my second question, <laughs> sorry. Uh, any remote can, uh, with the remote clinical, um, um, the remote clinical treatment, yeah? is that any disadvantage? Maybe any any uh, limitation of that of, of, of using this remote uh, treatment? Um, I can I cannot say I, I cannot say general disadvantage, but in general. There are essential consideration for this remote clinical, clinical care to be effective. Essential consideration. 
One of them, one of them is to maintain a proper engagement with the patient themselves. Because uh, as, as, as we know, in the virtual communication in general, maintaining proper engagement with the other side is, is, is quite challenging. So uh, one of the good model I, sh I showed in my presentation, we, we have the Zoom uh, video call uh, and one-to-one, -one, one one-to-one session. So one-to-one -one session and video call, something maybe you can, you can track the, the proper uh, engagement of the patients and you can even discuss uh, openly the points and uh, maybe uh, track the effectiveness of the communication itself. Uh, sometimes uh, as a group, or just a telephone call for for uh, for uh, for less time. This was not found to be that effective. The patients can maybe respond to the call, okay, uh, receive the message, can and uh, in action, the nothing much improvement can be achieved. So I can say as an essential consideration, if we go uh, for the remote clinical care, it has to consider the structure itself and has to consider the proper patient engagement. Uh, in the plan of action that have been agreed in in, uh, in the session itself. Okay, thank you, Dr. Uh, Naya. So, Most any other time. questions? If maybe I'm the one, the only one <laughs> who asked the question. <laughs> okay, no problem. Uh, maybe, uh, I, 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 th I think I think I think everyone is tired. Two hours in fasting, listening yeah, for. Uh... Fasting, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Inshallah, and in next session we will have the now a real, real uh, yes. <laughs> celebrating. Inshallah, it's already <laughs> open. Yeah. Very sure. Inshallah. Okay, thank you, Dr. Naim. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Salam. Salam. So uh, thank you for every, everyone. Yeah. So uh, we are coming come to the end of the sessions. Yeah. So let's uh, we end uh, this this uh, session with the uh, and uh, with the tasbih kepara and. Uh, in the of Surah Al As. Subhanallah, we have the cast of Shadwan, the cast of Puraka, and the Bilek. Okay, uh, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum, Mullah, and Rabbakatu. Well, I can say, I'm a matter of life.